Hello and welcome to this week's episode of It's a Sure Thing, a global conscious community of businesses, people making a difference. It's where we uplift each other, share each other's passion and, um, and educate each other. So tonight we have an amazing guest who I've known for many, many years and she is the founder of Talk Out Loud Australia which is a non-profit organization that help to prevent teenage suicide. Um, they do a number of different things. They've got an office in St. Agnes in South Australia. Um, and that, in that office, they have meditation groups, they have yoga classes, they have drop-in spaces for youth to be able to just drop in and talk to counselors. They have youth camps um, and so many other amazing things for uh, teenagers and youths to help find their voice. Um, so it's absolutely amazing what they've been doing since 2016. Um, so please, if you have got any of your friends that you'd like to come on board and listen tonight, please invite them and let's share share the love and share the sharing and let's, let's get this conversation um, happening about the serious issue that we have in in the world right now and in Australia, 275 suicides a month are the statistics. So without further ado, this amazing woman who I'm sure you will absolutely adore, who's one of the most heart-centered women I know, please welcome Mary G, founder of Talk Out Loud Australia. Good evening. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for your kind words. And right back at you. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. And um, Mary, I'd just like to start off just by acknowledging that this has been your passion for such a long time. And I know there's quite a few people who know you that obviously know your story, but would it be okay for you to share your purpose behind doing this and why it's so close yeah. to your heart? I'm more than um, happy to do so. And by doing so as well, I keep my brother's story alive, um, his memory. Uh, it was 31 years ago. We're in 2021, aren't we? Not 2022. I think with this pandemic, we sort of seem to be forgetting uh, which year it is. But 31 years ago, just over, I was a young bride and two days into my honeymoon was asked to leave and uh, come straight back home. And there I discovered the shocking truth um, behind my 16-year-old brother's suicide and it absolutely changed my life forever. So I vowed as a 28-year-old 20, that one day I would start a foundation for young people to speak out against uh, childhood sexual abuse in particular. I'm not going to go into the details of his case, but, um, you know, just uh, rest assured that I've done all I can to help young people um, find their voice, speak out, feel empowered and know that they're not alone and that there is there is actual help out there. So, Thank you so much. Every time you share that, I get really emotional. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's such an issue. And I think that we've talked about this before and at the monthly community uh, get-togethers that you've just started as well, bringing the local businesses together on board because... I think every single person knows somebody who has had an issue with this. So let's uh, let's see what we can do to to help you guys and to support you um, with your with your office at St Agnes. Um, can you just explain what people what people can do there? How they can come and see you and get in touch with you guys? Yeah, well, it's just grown organically in the last few years. So um, anyone who has who starts their own business will be able to relate to this. But it started first in my shed in the backyard. It graduated to my dining room table uh, where a few volunteers would gather and we'd have dinner. And my husband became quite famous for his uh, potato chips in particular. Um, and then we rented a space at Tea Tree Plus in uh, Modbury, part of Tea Tree Plaza uh, complex. And we were fortunate enough to secure a number of grants, which enabled us to move to the St. Agnes location, which is just over 100 square metres. And we offer 
uh, as you as you mentioned in the introduction, quite a number of different activities, and that's also grown uh, to meet the need of our community, especially our young people. But uh, in recent months, and I, I I think it's due to the pandemic as well, we are also helping the older generation. So if they if anyone over fifty in particular needs help with devices, um, we can help you. And I'm in the in the mix or in the throes of starting a, a men's group as well. We've had quite a few um, older men come through for support, but predominantly our focus is with youth and young adults up to about 30 years of age. So as you mentioned, we have meditation and that happens on a Monday night. Tuesday nights is yoga and I'm going to plug uh, Fernwood uh, Fitness. Is it Fernwood Fitness? I'm so embarrassed. Oh Sorry, Emma. Um, oh. So they're next door to us and they've offered their space for free so that we don't have to keep moving our furniture out of the common room. Um, and we have Thursday nights predominantly for volunteers who feel that they're ready to take on a commitment in committees. So we have our committee meetings Thursday nights and Friday nights is our social evenings um, where they can just hang in the um, common room. We have a pool table, we have board games, they love karaoke. Um, as soon as singing is allowed again, we'll, we'll prank that open again. Movie nights, you, you just name it. So the, the volunteers, uh, it, look, they, they've dubbed it their second family. So any idea they have, I, I we have a great discussion about it. If it's feasible, uh, we'll work on it and uh, initiate those um, ideas and make them real. But our, I guess what I'm really proud of, and Kate Pastor, if you're listening, one of our uh, proactive volunteers, a couple of years ago decided that we needed a one-on-one -on -one type of uh, session to offer people. So it's a non-clinical talking therapy structure and we offer this Monday, Tuesday and Wednesdays. It's for an hour, it's free of charge because we spend a lot of hours fundraising so that we can offer most of our activities at very minimal prices or free of charge. So the one-on-one -on -one real talk session, so real is an acronym for relaxed environment for active listening. Um, and you just come in and you share your story. It's just an opportunity for people to, to really feel listened to without someone trying to tell them what to do. We don't force any action plans on you, but predominantly we, we, you know, we do discuss that after the first, second or third um, uh, session. Mm -hmm. And it's just about connecting with each other. You know, so playing a game of pool while we're talking as well. We've taken clients around the block for a walk or across the road for a better coffee than what we offer. <laughs> so they <laughs> how did they? Um, but yeah, no. So it, it's just about making people feel comfortable, and I think we've lost the art of true connection. Um, even though we've got social media, but it, it's not as real as, as as connecting in person. So especially with young people, we try to to instill that in them that it's. It, you know, just try to get out of bed, try to try something different, get comfortable feeling uncomfortable uh, because that's where you grow. Well, fantastic. And I, I have to say thank you so, so much for finding the time to meet tonight for this show because I know like what you've just explained that my head's spinning and, uh, you know, I do event management and I'm like, wow, there's something going on all the time and you're always busy and you've, you, you, you're just trying to, we need about 10 Marys, don't we? We need to clone you 10 times. Oh, I would love to find some more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and also at the weekend, you've just delivered another camp. And how many camps have you done now? Um, over seven. That was uh, camp number 20. I, I was saying 24, but I think it's 23. I've got to look over the statistics later. Um, I did forget to mention that. So when we first started, my love of, uh, youth camps in particular was the pre was the principal activity and all the others have grown, uh, you know, uh, organically, as I said before. But the camps are just amazing. So this year has been phenomenal in the different camp programs that we've offered. So we started the year with Camp Tembo, which is Swahili for elephant and obviously mental health, elephant in the room. And we offer that to young girls 10 to 13 and they were matched with a mentor per, per young girl. And that was just amazing. And then we went out to Iron Knob and we uh, put on a camp for the Port Augusta Youth Council there, on up Port Augusta, Wyala. We are talking to Port Augusta. And that was completely different. So very physical. Um, if anyone's been to the Arapa Blue Light campsite there, you'll know that uh, yeah, you've got to get uh, quite active on those two days. <laughs> 
boot camps. Um, well, I've been there, done that. So I stand back and I supervise inverted commas. Um, yeah, but we still share stories. Our um, the the uh, activity that changes everybody, where you see the magic happen, is on the Saturday night of the camp, the second night, where the young people get into groups and uh, share their stories in a structured activity using some amazing card cards that I bought in Melbourne. So, yeah, we've just come back from one last weekend, so sorry if I'm sounding a bit croaky still. It was just an amazing experience. And um, and this one here was Camp Kazen, which is Japanese for continuous improvement, and this was for 18-year-old um, young people and over. So we had them as, as young as early 40s join our camp this time and we offered a mixture of the usual camp activities but also incorporated some retreat style sessions for example reiki um, performed mm. um, by the wonderful linda who does our meditation in the office and connor um, and that was an absolute sellout so you couldn't you know it just it just booked out straight away and yoga and meditation as well so we had guided meditation we had walking meditation um, and it was just amazing to hear how much the young people uh, were benefiting from those sessions and it was something that they normally wouldn't have tried before. And then our third camp program is Camp uh, Bindi, which is Aboriginal for mate or mateship, and that's for 14 to 17-year-olds, which we are just revamping at the moment and about to offer early next year. So. Wow, that sounds incredible. And I know I've, I've come along to a couple of camps uh, before, so I've experienced it. And it's just it's just wonderful because everybody gets involved. They all get a job to do and they do it as a team. So it's a team building exercise. It's it's great exposure for them um, and learning how to be to be leaders and, and teammates as well. Um, so if anybody wants to get involved and volunteer their time or help cleaning up or being in the kitchen or anything like that, can they get in touch with the office? Yeah, um, um, if you end, on, end up on my board of directors, that becomes a compulsory prerequisite. Um, so I think one, one board member has dodged it so far, but uh, Hillary, I, I'm, I'm out to... to... <laughs> to get you on the games. Um, yes, they can contact us. We're always looking for more volunteers. Even, uh, I'm not going to call them security. We never have an issue with people not getting to sleep and, you know, causing any problems and so on. But I do like someone to be up, and it's usually me until about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning until I know that everybody's safe and sound. But, yes, you can certainly contact me for anything. Beautiful. And Mary's number's here and it will be in the link as well below. And we've just got a, a message here from Myra. Thanks, Myra Thompson, for joining us. She's put, I wish they had that when I was young. And uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. And um, people might not have heard of Talk Out Loud Australia before. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on here and and um, also the fact that we've got the Corporate Wellness Conference coming up that you're involved in. You're going to be one of our guest speakers um, and we're going to donate proceeds from that in October. And that's actually part of the Wellness, uh, Wellfest Adelaide and Wellness Month in October with the City of, Camp uh, City of Adelaide. So it's, it's all about building that awareness, building the resilience, getting the message out there. So, yeah, hoping that this will actually help with that. Um, and that, that you'll, you'll get the support that you need because I know that you are writing grants all the time yeah. and you're constantly needing some funding to keep going with this. And um, how amazing would it be to have Talk Out Loud offices in, in all the different areas, all the different, like down south, north, east, west, it would be Yes, nice. definitely. Well, we're very close to having an office in the city just to help out, especially the south. I'm getting a lot of inquiries from the south, but we've also got interest from Brisbane and Melbourne. Um, that's why I've, you know, it's it's called Talk Out Loud Australia because we do intend to to partner up and offer, especially the camp experiences um, around the country. Because there's, I think, Beck. Thank you very much. Would love to know more as well, and Myra. Um, yeah, just the, the camps, uh, because they're, they're, they're overnight, if they were just day experiences, it's just not the same thing. But you watch them from the Friday night, everybody arriving quite tentative, no no eye contact, to on the Sunday crying and hugging because um, they're going to miss each other. Uh, and, it's it, again, it's just, as I said, it's just about knowing that no matter what condition you have, and a lot of the young people that 
do attend the camp, do struggle with a mental health condition, but they're not judged. They feel safe. They feel included. And the leaders on camp, you know, um, building up their, their leadership skills and uh, ready for their own workplaces to take some of those skills back there or even just in their personal lives. It's just such a multidimensional um, uh result or an outcome from every camp and every camp is different i did volunteer in a number of other camps uh camp organizations in my younger days and one thing that really stood out was how how can you possibly deliver the same camp each and every time and i was a little bit disappointed in that so i make sure that every single camp has a different theme uh we keep our core activities the same but that's why people are coming back for their sixth and seventh camp in a row Absolutely. Um, and also, if people want to sponsor and pay for a youth or, or somebody in the program to actually come along to the camp, you, you offer that as well. People can sponsor that. They can donate to you. They can um, provide their services to you. They can run a workshop. There's so many different things that are available. So you, you're all over it. And whatever help people can, can give you, then please come on come on through, call Mary or leave a message for Mary because she might be flat out. So just text her if possible and she'll get back to you when she possibly can because she's always flat out. So um, do they have it in Scotland? Okay. Do you, oh, I'll that? fly over there whenever. When, <laughs> when the border's open, I'll gladly come over there. So, um, yeah, we do have a UK fan. Um Oh my goodness, uh, Joe Plum. Yeah, he's got quite a few followers and is really supporting us. And every time he likes one of our posts, our uh, reach increases uh, to about 30,000 just on one post. So Joe, if you happen to be listening, um, thank you very much. But um, the point that you just made about the facilitators, yes, we welcome anyone who would like to present a workshop. We can't afford to pay for everybody who um, is able to, to facilitate. Yeah. But uh, we'll do the best that we can. Yeah. Well, look, I'm sure people would be willing to give their time because the reward is seeing yeah, the change in these in these people. It's yeah. it's it's fantastic, and they are our future. Um, and right. it's so important. And and what you're doing is incredible work. And I know how hard you have. Well, I don't know how hard, but I can imagine how hard you have worked all these years. Um, and if somebody could just plonk a million dollars into your account to just help get this up and running everywhere else, it would make it would make things just a, a lot easier. So uh, I do implore anyone to just do whatever you can to assist in any way. So um, now there is a great Gatsby ball that you have put together, and I know that you do lots of different events, but this one is very special ball. It's been postponed because of how things are now. Yeah. <laughs> time. Um, but uh, I know I've got a table. I've got a few people on the table so far, but um, it's going to be on Friday, the 4th of March now. Yes, we're, we're going to do it on the 4th of March because we're just, because of the last ball where we had literally 400 people on the dance floor, here in Adelaide we still can only have 50 on the dance floor. Um, and I'm, I suspect that that might even decrease uh, if uh, situations don't continue to improve. So we just figured, you know, we'd like to, to do it when we can kick up our heels and let our hair down and have a great time. So it's a great Gatsby theme. Um, and if you book a table of 10, you get 10% off your ticket, which is a great saving. But, you know, it's just about attending and showing us that support and and also getting to know some of the volunteers because we'll also be awarding I think we have about six different awards that we'll be presenting on the night so you'll see how hard our volunteers work as well yeah and also if anybody's got anything to donate into the auction and the raffle I know I've made a donation so we can get in touch with you to give a, a donation yeah yeah um, and Verity said she'd like to have a discussion with you. Uh, Verity's a breath worker. She's beautiful. And Beck said she'll be in touch as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you everyone, that's awesome. And so with regards to that ball, if anybody wants to come on the Enlightened Tribe table, <laughs> let me know. Um, and you can just pay direct to, um, to talk out loud and I can pop you on our table for March. So is there anything else? Oh, let's have let's talk about numbers. 
for those that like numbers, Mary. So you have assisted over a thousand youths so far on camp and you've reached over 4,000 students in their, in your school presentations. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it you're able to do for the school? You go out to the different schools and talk? Yes, in, in, uh, in, well, up until about a couple of years ago, it was, you know, we, they don't sort of encourage people to come into schools because of the pandemic. So I haven't really tried to get back in. But before that, it was just going into either um, design uh, customised or bespoke uh, workshops for them. So I'm happy to come in and I discuss it with the students directly as well. What is it you need? Let's put something together. And then either a 10 week course or a one afternoon, or we can come and speak for an hour. It's basically whatever the school needs. But I'm also qualified to teach um, youth mental health first aid. And by the end of the year, the standard mental health first aid and also teen mental health first aid, which means that teens or young people will know what to say to each other. Because let's face it, young people speak to their peers first, their friends first. Um, so I'm very excited about being able to offer that to schools and communities um, as the year uh, begins next year. Fantastic. That is awesome. Um, and the other thing, so over just over 70 people a week, the 300 a month are using your facilities um, yes. and the, the activities and the workshops that you run as well. Yes, that's um, right. And, and this this new this new initiative that you've decided to um, call in the local businesses around St Agnes, so that was last month that you started it, and the next one is uh, on Tuesday. So is that open? Did you need more people to volunteer their time and come along to that monthly meet? Well, the more the mirror, even though it's a local focus group, it's more you know just anyone in in Adelaide, uh, so to speak. And I, I decided to to start this because of all the conversations I was having with um, business people who were struggling on their own. And, and I figure, well, why do we have to suffer alone? And why do we have to keep reinventing the wheel? Let's see if we can put our heads together and come up with some common values and common projects and activities to work uh, together with and and just share that load and and while you're doing it you know just have a coffee and connect with each other and and have a lovely time and, and share stories as well so every week we'll feature somebody's personal story um so i'm looking forward to seeing where this takes us in the future yeah i think it's i think it's great and um that collaboration is what enlightened tribe is all about it's what my time tv is all about with the who's producing in the background um, and it's the way of the future. We and I know you're very much one person that kind of likes to work on your own. You don't like to ask for help. You don't, you know. So I'm very I'm learning. Aware of that. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah, you're learning. And 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 I'm I've been exactly the same most of my life. And now it's like actually no. The only way for us to do this is to collaborate yeah. um, with with everything. And you know, it's it's the whole collective and when we all stick together and actually we, we can make much more of a difference. So, um, and yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for making a huge difference and for still sticking with it, even though you've gone through some major, major heartache and trauma and losses and, you know, you've got close to beautiful teenagers and they've taken their lives. I mean, that must be, yeah. that must be devastating for you. Um, yeah. It is, and you never, um, with, with grief, with suicide grief in particular, um, I, I use the analogy of, it, of the tide, you know. It, it draws you back in when you least expect it. It's not like the standard, um, you know, seven stages of grief. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's just about, yeah, linking in with other people who truly get it. You, it's just so difficult to explain. And when, you know, it, it's like your relatives, you know, when I, I still keep in touch with all of my cousins. So we get together and it's, it's just it's just beautiful because we share that that background and that connection. Um, and I just want people, as I said before, and I keep saying, just to feel connected and not to feel as if they need to struggle on their own. Yeah, you know, so we need to get back to being a community based, a true community based society, not one that's so isolated and um, yeah, really destructive. Beautiful words. Thank you, Mary. So um, people can get in touch with you via your Facebook page, 
your phone? Uh, how else can they get in touch with you? Or the office? Is there an office? Yeah, they can get yeah, walk-ins are increasing all the time. Um, yeah. So where, are, many, where yeah. are you in St Agnes? Sorry, St Agnes. We're right opposite the St Agnes Shopping Centre. So it's the corner, almost the corner of Hancock Road and North East Road. Um, or two or three minutes into the hills from Tea Tree Plaza. Um, but, yeah, just give us a call or a text message. Um, message us on the Facebook page. The website is being reconstructed as we speak, so don't go on there because you'll see things from San Francisco on there. Don't even, don't even ask me to explain. Um, so Facebook page. We are on Instagram as well, as some of you are only on Instagram also or LinkedIn. Yeah. Right, fantastic. And of course, if anybody wants to book a ticket for the Corporate Wellness Conference, you'll be there and um, yeah, book a table for that. And part proceeds will be going to donated to Talk Out Loud Australia. Um, and for all the links to the people from the Enlightened Tribe um, and to find out more details about how you can be part of the community, please go to sueshaw.com.au to the Enlightened Tribe Conscious Global Community Directory. That's where you'll also find um, lots of amazing healing practitioners from all around the world, and it just keeps growing and growing. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, Mary, you are an absolute joy and a delight and an inspiration, and thank you to everybody um, for joining in tonight, and I hope that you will get lots of support um, from the beautiful people that are part of this tribe. Um, and anyone who else is watching. So thank you. Thank you. It's all about the young people in particular. They're our, our future and we need to look after them. So thank you. Thank you again, everyone. And we need to look after you too. Because <laughs> we want you there. I'll be right. I'll be right. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks, thank everybody. You See you next week. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.